السلام علیکم جی آئی نو پخیر آغلے نی ہاؤ ماں سونے شو میں وش ملے و ہائی بن زائمز ہائی ہگز این ہیلو کلاس گوٹن موگن ایز ویل لیڈیز این جنرمز تینک یو ویری مچ فور ٹیوننگ انٹو پی ٹی وائی یو واچ ویل دس مارننگ لانگ سائیڈ شہزاد خان این مہا مخدوم اینڈ فور ایوری بڈی ہو از ٹیون انٹو پی ویلی گلوبل ایز ویل اے ویری گڈ مارننگ ہیلو مہا ہاؤ ار یو آئی ایم ویری گڈ تینک یو شہزاد ہاؤ ار یو لک ویری سمارٹ ٹوڈے تینک یو ویری مچ ایز سیمز لائک یو گوئنگ فور سم سورٹ اف انٹرویو ایز فور ا ریزن وی گوٹ ار ہائر اپ اسٹینڈنگ رائٹ ان دی ایم سی آر آئی ناؤ ٹوڈے سو آئی تھاٹ دیٹ یو آئی شوڈ پریپیئر مائی سیلف یا دیٹس گڈ ایز اولویز گڈ ٹو بی پریپیئرڈ بٹ آئی ہوپ یو گائز آل ویل ٹوڈے وی ہیو ا ویری امپورٹنٹ شو فار یو ایز یو نو وی لائک ٹو گیٹ ریز اویئرنس اینڈ گیو یو گائز ایز مچ انفارمیشن ایز پاسبل اینڈ especially on education, what is the situation within Pakistan. And we told you, we've given you the IB um, information, the International Baccalaureate, we've done American studies, we've done the Fulbright Scholarship, we've done even uh, education system within the UK and how people can get involved. But there are actual other countries and other universities and other places that offer as good education, you know, world-class education, and they can give you opportunities. And it's very different. And very rightly said it is, uh, Maha, at the same time, because half of the time what happens is that people, they are just aware of the education system within the UK or probably USA. Yeah. Because the awareness wasn't spread, and then yeah. people do not really want to, you know, do their, that research on their own as well. Mm -hmm. Now, what if we tell you, or probably we, we give you opportunities where it might be a less cheaper, mm -hmm or probably at the same time the same standard education as well people have started going to china people have started going to europe people have started going to other countries as well mm -hmm. and it's only because of the fact that the awareness is being spread and exactly. today ladies and gentlemen what we are discussing is how it is actually to study in germany exactly because that morgan uh, yeah exactly again. actually I even uh, me and my friends were actually exploring germany to study like yeah. uh, you know when we were kind of unhappy in our career yeah. so we were like let's go and study in germany it's a great country as well so we're going to find out like shazad said what is the system how do you get admission what are the scholarships there what is the cultural aspect of it like do people get on do pakistanis actually go there so to discuss that we've been joined by some wonderful guests in the studio we've been joined by her excellency miss ina lapel who is the ambassador of germany to pakistan assalamu alaikum good Hello morning assalamu alaikum oh sorry <laughs> yes, good morning morgan <laughs> good morning how are you just fine thank you thank you so much for joining us uh, besides our excellency miss ina lapel we've been joined by mr lars bergmeier he is the director of german academic exchange service in pakistan good morgen good morning <laughs> and uh, assalamu alaikum to you wa uh, besides mr lars bergmeier we've been joined by maliha iman ali she was a student at duisburg essen university Assalamu alaikum, good morning. Wa alaikum salam. And good morning to you too. Thank you. <laughs> uh, good morning to you too and lovely to be here. Thank, Thank you, you very much for us. coming over. So yes. first things first, why do you think Germany is a good option to go and study over there? Well actually among the, the countries that are not English speaking, mm. Germany is the most popular destination for international students nowadays. Mm -hmm. There are almost 400 universities to choose from and there is an increasing number of programs that are completely run in English language. Mm -hmm. So it is not strictly necessary to really study German in order to follow that and mm -hmm. to take the exam, although it is still useful to have a basic grasp of Germany mm -hmm. just to feel more at home. Okay. And it's an interesting country in the middle of Europe. Mm -hmm. The academic standards are very high. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's free of tuition, at least uh, most of the universities that belong to the public sector. So I think it's an attractive offer. Okay, no, it sounds very good. I mean, yeah. free education. No tuition fee, wow. Yeah, that's fantastic. Because um, I think that's the thing that scares parents the most when their children are finishing their A-levels, especially within Pakistan. But let me ask uh, Mr. Lars Bergmeier, um, within Germany, what, op what opportunities are there for people, for students from Pakistan? Yeah, as the ambassador has already pointed out, there are about 400 universities that... Uh, applicants from Pakistan can choose from and these cover a wide range. Um, we have uh, universities where you can study all subjects, mm. big institutions with uh, often more than 140 subjects to choose from. We also have something that is special. We call it the Universities of Applied Sciences. Mm -hmm. These are institutions that offer programs that are more structured and they are for people that want to gain hands-on knowledge. Oh These right. are higher education institutions, um, fully-fledged higher education institutions, mm. and they have um, a more practical outlook than the universities. They have internships, um, uh, connections to industry, which universities also have, but there is a more practical outlook to it. And all these things um, 
they are there for people to choose from. And I think I should already recommend one website mm. sure. where you can find everything that uh, we shall be talking about today. It's very simple. The, the address is study-in.de. Yes, and we will be sharing that um, at the bottom at the end of the show as well. Um, that's wonderful. But uh, there's 400 universities. That's a lot to choose from, especially yes. within a country where the emphasis is based on England or America in, in the mainstream. So let me ask Maliha, um, how does one person from Pakistan who's considering to go abroad for studying choose from 400 universities? Well, um, I think I would just be reiterating what m the ambassador said and Mr. Bergmeier as well. Um, it, it really depends on what you've done uh, before and what your interests are because, mm -hmm. I mean, the sky's the limit. There's, mm -hmm. There are programs uh, that you can't even, probably can't even dream of. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you can do your degree in anything. I myself did my master's in development and governance. Um, my bachelor was in um, political science okay. and it was already in... Um, a country abroad. It was in Hong Kong. Okay. All right. um, wow. So, like, I had that. Uh, I was able to compare, you know, a lot mm. between uh, institutions in Asia and institutions in Europe, and okay. it was. So you had that exposure yeah. to yes, the international organizations. Yeah, but I now did. what we what we want to know is that most of the people, most of the students, mm. I mean, these are not the countries where they go to study from yeah. Pakistan. Yeah. How did you end up in Hong Kong first, and then later <laughs> in Germany? I mean. That's something exciting to ask. Well, um, my roots are in Quetta, in Balochistan. Okay. And um, money. yeah, money. I was actually studying economics there, and I um, came to a point where I was tired of the system and you know um, of a lot of things that go on in universities in Pakistan, yeah. like favoritism, and mm -hmm. I won't elaborate too much on that. Yeah. But um, <coughs> thank you. Yeah. Then I <laughs> then I started you know searching for universities mm -hmm. abroad. And uh, I, I was really influenced by liberal arts, mm -hmm. so that that really uh, formed my decision to um, to apply for Hong Kong. Okay. And you know, uh, I had this in my mind: oh, it's closer to home, and yeah. you know, I'll still be in Asia. But um, when I saw the Dart Scholarship, I mean, it was it was perfect. It was exactly what I wanted to study: development studies, um, and uh, the fact that you have to come back home mm -hmm. uh, to really like um, apply what you've learned in Germany here. Uh, that was also a big incentive for me to that's wonderful. go there. I mean, that is just so, yeah, that's what I wanted to find out, you know, how did you end up uh, going there? Because it's all about awareness and research. Um, now, in regards to uh, Your Excellency already mentioned that there are whole um, programs which are within English, but for students to go there, obviously, uh, they need to learn a bit of uh, the language to get by in their personal life. So, um, how would you recommend people to prepare if they were to go? You know, would they take German lessons or how would they integrate? How to integrate, yeah. yeah. Yes, well, one of the things I would recommend from the outset is for students who are thinking about this to take their time mm -hmm. to start early so that they can really look at the full spectrum of what is there among the 400 universities and figure out which one works best for them, mm -hmm. how much German they actually need. Because if they choose a German language program, obviously they will need to be better prepared than if they choose an English language one. Mm. But even if they choose an English language one, I would recommend that they get at least a basic level of German, mm -hmm. like A1 or A2. Okay. We have uh, German language institutes that are fully accredited Goethe institutes mm. in uh, Karachi and in Lahore, the Annemarie Schimmelhaus. But right. there were also lots of uh, private institutions here in Islamabad. There is Namel in Islamabad. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Goethe Institute takes uh, certified language exams mm -hmm. so that people can also have a certified paper that, that they have that skill. So there are quite a few opportunities to, to study German. Okay, cool. There are also uh, courses on the web actually. Mm -hmm. One can access them easily and if it's difficult to go to a course one, one can also study quite well and, and for free from that. Okay, so but people shouldn't be scared of the fact that it is in, uh, you know, it's a different language altogether. Yeah. And just to be sure, I think I'm going to ask it again as well. So is it essential for anybody traveling to Germany for educational purposes to go through a basic German course? Yes or no? Um, it's right. not, um, you know, a lot of things have, uh, have happened in the German education right. system. Mm -hmm. And one of the developments is 
that the system is becoming more and more internationalized. Yes. Um, we have more than 900 courses, programs, degree programs, uh, programs in English, most of them in the master more area, 900. more than 900. Wow. And for these courses, um, there are, when they are conducted in English, there are no formal German language requirements. Okay. But, of course, we highly recommend <laughs> to learn some basic German okay. because not every shop assistant, not every lab technician yes. is up to the mark um, as, as uh, someone coming from Pakistan like Malia would this maybe expect it English language wise. Okay. No? And, um, in Germany, we have almost 19,000 degree programs. 900 of them are in English. And of course, learning German, I mean, on a level where you can actually study, gives you a lot more variety. Okay. Yeah? But um, in order to get admission to an English-speaking program, there is no formal requirement to okay. learn German. I'm talking about the general rules. But it is highly, highly recommended yeah. to learn some, some basic um, and it's yeah, always good to have another language as well and be able Absolutely. to get by. That's fantastic. Amazing. That'll be amazing. I think I that's fantastic I as well. Gem. But then now let's just talk about the criteria of admission. For example, that for example, if you're talking about undergrad program or the post-graduation program, what are the requirements? Because usually universities ask for SAT and then they ask for IELTS, TOEFL. So what is it with Germany? Yeah. Um, First thing is, I'm introducing the most important points. If you want to know more, I've introduced this website yes, to you. Yes, and we will share it. Study-in.de, thanks a lot. And first of all, good grades. Yeah, I mean, um, when people study in Germany, they are in a situation of competition. They have to have good grades. Um, because also, believe it or not, uh, many people from other countries, they also want to study in <laughs> yeah. Germany, and they might exactly. also have good grades. No? Um, the second is um, the language. Um, when you st uh, want to study a course in English, an IELTS or a TOEFL is usually needed. IELTS typically with a score, a band score of 6.5. Right. TOEFL with a typical score of 550 or 213, depending on the format. And when it is German, as the ambassador has already indicated, there is the Goethe Institute in Karachi. There you can take study-specific language tests mm. called Test Duff. And there you also need uh, four times four score. I'm not going into the details too much, but you have to have you have to be up to the mark when it comes to All the right. language. And no? since okay. our universities and over here are recognized by the Higher Education I'm Commission, coming to this, mm -hmm. yes, you need to you need to come from an accredited university. Okay. Um, and um, depending on what you want to study, an undergrad course or a master course, either you have to have um, 16 years when you want to study a master, 16 years of total education, or okay. 14 years when you want to study a bachelor. Mm -hmm. If you have an FSC, generally at the moment two years in Pakistan yeah. are required, or one year in Pakistan plus another one year in a foundation course. But as I've said, I don't want to you know, go into too yeah. much detail, study-in.de is the site where you can look yeah. everything up. And we share that with the producer as well, so he will have that on the banner. So you and I think quite a lot of people are aware of these standards as well, so it was nothing new as well. Yeah. So, you know, for the rest of the details, you can obviously log on to the website, we'll share it on our page, it'll be everywhere, the ticket's down there on the television screen, so exactly. please don't worry. But I want to ask Imal, uh, Maliha, sorry now, um, when you w were looking, so did you have, so you're coming back to, because it's about the practical living there as yeah. well. So when you went there, did you have a, did you do this basic uh, uh, language course, or did you go there and then pick it up? How did how was it living in Germany and studying there? Okay, um, so a part of the DAD program, mm -hmm. um, as as a scholarship holder, uh, they prepare you with a six month uh, German language course. Okay, first. nice. So I mean that was that was for me that was really important mm -hmm. i was very grateful for it at the end of the day because mm. it you know it makes living there a lot easier mm -hmm. uh, like mr bergmeier said that not not everyone has a level of english that you know mm. and that's expected in every country mm. 
And you know, if when, once you learn the language of uh, the country that you're in, you instantly connect with people. I mean, I think it's really important that... You feel as if you were born here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, so how, how was the experience and how were, how were the people, how was the area, what was the city like? Because that's like... How was your university people, like? How was the university life? Yeah, because people get a bit scared, you know, going to different countries, especially yeah. with all the media reports of what's actually happening within right. Europe, you know, like... So what, how was it? Well, um, how were people? Were they nice? I would advise people not to, you know, give in to too much of the, what they hear on the news. Because, mm. I mean, there's a lot said about Pakistan that's not true either, you know? Mm. Um, so, I mean, uh, you ask about, like, what university life was like mm. and uh, pretty much the same way it is here. Mm. Um, uh, in terms of academics, mm. I think that uh, Germany is really excels at uh, the research uh, area. Mm -hmm. So we, we had really good training in, in research. Uh, teaching is different from here in, in the way that um, you have teachers who really allow you to uh, express yourself and participate in class. Okay. So con like your contribution is... Can you have chips and juice in the class? Sorry? Can you have chips and juice in the class? You're not allowed Oh, there. no. And you can't sleep <laughs> right. either. No, because right. <laughs> that would just be rude. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, the experience was uh, really, in, in every way, it was really enriching. Because mm. um, my class, for example, um, was made up of all international students. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we had classes with German students. And, you know, you, you realize that, you know, they're so, uh, their ideas are so uh, easily expressed and they're so bold in what they say. And, yeah. you know, they, they it's... Okay. I, want, I want to pick up on the research aspect yeah. as well. Now, for example, over here, when you study in a university, whenever you have a research project, you have to go run to your dad, ask for the money, do the project, and then you know, take you to the university and get yourself graded. Yeah. How was it in Germany? Does the universities, they sponsor your research projects? How, how or you have to do it yourself? Well, our advisors mm -hmm. are, the faculty in general, and our advisors are really supportive. Mm -hmm. And right. the relationship between the advisor and <coughs> advisee is not typical, like a uh, teacher-student relationship. They mm -hmm. treat you almost as equals, yeah. which is really refreshing from I mean, you know, here we... As a young adult, so yeah. There's exactly. no discrimination like over adult. there, no biasness. No, not at all. Excellent. And then, I mean, uh, they have expertise in our region of the world <coughs> as well, which Sorry. is really, I mean, it's good for someone who's writing about mm. uh, Pakistan or, or this region. Mm. Um, but uh, besides that, uh, you were asking that... I was asking whether the university puts in some research funds as well. Right. Or they do not. Um, as a Dart scholar, actually, you could apply for this uh, funding to mm. say I want to come back home in the time that I'm doing my master thesis and I want to do some original like primary research here. Uh, you could apply for funding for that. Wow. Um, yeah. Okay, so excellent. that opportunity was. There. So it's a very, you know, very encouraging, very supportive, um, you know, kind of experience. Absolutely. Wonderful. And well, one last thing, one okay. last thing, which I wanted to ask. Very sorry for that. Now, half of the times, you know, since we mentioned about other countries where students have to go and study, they have to work half of the time as well to, you know, fulfill all the requirements of their educational right. expense. How was it in Germany? Did you really have to work outside the university as well just to fulfill? or you were on a scholarship program, how was it for you? Is it expensive living there? No, it's, I think it's quite student friendly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you always have options. You can, you can go to the most expensive supermarket, mm -hmm. yeah. and that wouldn't be very wise on a student <laughs> budget. Mm -hmm. But you can also go to a very affordable one. And I mean, it all depends on how you, you budget from, mm -hmm. from month to month. Okay. Right. And then DAD is uh, very generous in that they, they give us the stipend for the month. Excellent. So, you know, we really didn't have to worry about working. Mm. And I'd like to add that, I mean, if you are, if you're wise with how you manage your money, you could have money at the end of the month to also travel the rest of Europe because okay. it's really affordable. Yeah. Um, and that was like, that was amazing for us to okay. be able to travel through all these countries without the hassle of getting a visa each time. Mm -hmm. And I mean, uh, seeing Europe is, I mean, and your parents knew everyone. about it that you went there for studying and you were traveling all around Absolutely. Europe. Absolutely, with <laughs> their permission. <laughs> exactly. Oh, right, right. But it's balanced. I mean, Europe is about you know social abilities and academic exactly. abilities, not yeah. just memorizing. But um, let's. Uh, I want to ask Your Excellency, um, how important is it to actually raise the awareness within Pakistan to encourage more young adults to go and study in Germany? What 
what benefits will that reap? Well, I think we are doing fairly well. We have about 3,500 students there at the moment that we know of, yeah. which is quite impressive. We have many people who avail of that opportunity. One of the pluses, of course, is that it's free. Mm. Uh, but the price that comes with it mm. is that uh, people are more expected than in uh, UK or in the USA to do their own work, to be uh, good self-organizers, to be very self-disciplined. Mm. So it is a bit time consuming to go through all the administration and then once the student is there, mm. he or she also has to figure out their own way, how to set up their schedule, how to get ready yeah. for, for exams and all that. Uh, as Mr. Bergmann has pointed out, one is taken more by the hand in, in other countries. Yeah. So I think the fact that education at, at universities in Germany is free mm. does not mean that the quality is less, mm. just that uh, the student has to do more of their own work. Okay, but as in w what uh, has in cultural benefits, as in, you know, if so a Pakistani student is going to Germany to study and then they're coming back, how important is it for the relations of the two countries to encourage this kind of you know, exchange ah. and <coughs> Well, of course, it also has a big external benefits for the relations because yeah. uh, all the alumni that come back from Germany mm. know Germany, understand Germany, and <coughs> can be considered also ambassadors. Mm. So that is a very useful thing to have. Mm. But I would also stress the other cultural aspect which Mrs. Malia has also mm. mentioned, that in the German uh, academic system, students are required to actively participate to actually question what the professor is saying mm. rather than just repeating what he is saying. And if they have a good reason mm. to disagree, that is perfectly acceptable, that's even encouraged. And uh, I think that is also an interesting mm. input to give into Pakistan. this system. Exactly, <laughs> it is. But then, you know, before we uh, go on towards the break as well, yes. there's one last thing which I wanted to ask Your Excellency, that is, are we looking at a quota system or are we looking at a certain f figure that, you know, this is the a number of students who are going to go to Germany and study from Pakistan or anybody can go, there's no limit, or if they fulfill the criteria? The number of scholarships, of course, is limited. Okay. Mm. But for self-appliers, it depends, like Mr. Bergmeier said, on the grades. Mm. There are so and so many places and the universities fill them according to merit. And so that is the main criteria. Okay, so right. there is a cap. So wonderful. So let's go for a short break. And when you come back, we're going to discuss in a bit more detail what Her Excellency said about the, the, the skills they pick up in Germany and how they can apply it in Pakistan. And then the public-private scholarships coming up as well. Let's go for a short break. Good morning. The largest cultural activity in Pakistan is the annual national folk festival, Lok Mela, held in Islamabad in October each year. A 
Over the past two decades, this festival has taken on an international flavor, and more than 20 different countries have sent their artisans and performers to participate in the festival. Nationally, the festival has become a thing of pride for artisans and performers who come on their own to participate. Most important of all, the provinces of Pakistan and Azad Jammu and Kashmir put up beautifully decorated pavilions and visitors have the unique opportunity to see an assortment of Pakistan's traditionally rich culture in the federal capital of Islamabad for an exciting 10 days. An exhibition of artisans at work under the banner of the Heritage Museum forms the core of this festival. Pavilions of each province depict their own regional culture and crafts. The research and media center of Lok Bursa arranges groups of dancers that perform all over the festival grounds, inviting visitors to join in. And in the evening, arranges music concerts from all parts of Pakistan. This festival is a true depiction of the diversity found in Pakistani culture. Fairs and Festivals of Pakistan. The Festival of Lamps, or Mela Chiraga, is a very important and popular event in Pakistan. This is celebrated every spring on the last Friday of March outside the Shalimar Gardens. The show has been described as an eloquent expression of Pakistan's heritage and an authentic account of its agricultural and industrial achievements. <laughs> Fortress Stadium, the venue of the show, is thronged by active participants, foreign visitors, and people who watch the festival with great enthusiasm, verve, and aplomb. A large number of them are interested in watching and appreciating the best breeds of livestock. Many derive pleasure by watching other activities, such as the display parade of animals, dances by horses and camels, polo matches, tent pegging, dog shows and their races, daring acts of stuntmen, mass display of military band, rhythmical physical exercise by children, tastefully decorated industrial floats and torchlight tattoo shows. Additional attractions include a subtle interplay of lights to weave enticing patterns at night and breathtaking acts by foreign groups. <laughs> Fairs and festivals of Pakistan. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back and for everybody who just tuned into PT World, you watch your world this morning alongside Shazad and Maha and today we're discussing about educational opportunities within Germany and how it is to actually study over there and for that particular reason we have been joined by Her Excellency, the German Ambassador and then you know we've got somebody who's actually experienced how it is to be in Germany and study and being from Pakistan as well. Exactly. <laughs> and so before the, we uh, finished, uh, went for the break, um, Her Excellency was mentioning about uh, the differences in the way people are taught in Germany. You know, you're allowed to question the professor, you're allowed to bring in new research, you know, you're allowed to do your own research and stuff. So I want to ask Maliha, uh, because as you said, if you're part of the scholarship program, then you have to come back to Pakistan. Yeah. And the reason you did leave was 
because you were a bit fed up of the system within Pakistan. So how have you now, the skills that you learned, you know, the questioning, being treated as an equal, as an individual, where your voices, you know, your opinions matter. Yes. Coming here, what was the experience like and how have you applied those skills here? Okay. Um, firstly, let me just clarify that you do have the option to stay in Germany. I mean, okay. that's a possibility, absolutely. But since we are studying public policy and good governance, mm -hmm. um, to come back here and apply it in mm -hmm. Pakistan is, I mean, it's, why, it's a wiser you're decision. You're talking about good governance, yeah. right? Exactly, right? I mean, we need it here yeah. more than uh, they do in, yeah. in Germany. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that you become, definitely it's, there's a whole reconditioning that happens when you sit in German mm -hmm. um, institutions mm -hmm. and uh, you become definitely bolder, more assertive mm -hmm. in your views and your opinions. And um, sorry, but not, it's not always appreciated here. Mm. So I Don't mean- Don't be sorry, it's fine. <laughs> we're, we're here to speak semi-truths. <laughs> no, 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 let's speak the truth, yes. Yeah, it's, it's um, I, I think it's a little bit of uh, a struggle to, mm. to make yourself, um, to make yourself be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. So uh, like, I mean, being uh, from Quetta and then being a woman, mm. these are, I mean, it's like a double. Uh, yeah. Come on, don't be you're yeah. Yeah. And don't be a stereotype <laughs> male, Shazad. <laughs> like, come on. You, no, because you're stuck between a rock and a half. Okay, look, Absolutely. I've lived here three years. I say these things. She lived here all her life. She's saying these things. We're not making this stuff up. It's there for certain people. Yeah, obviously they do it's there. I'm not saying that it's not We're there. We're not saying it's there for everyone. Yeah. Don't get so sensitive about <laughs> it. Okay, so now how have you tried to overcome it? Because that's the whole point of going there to study, is to bring back and share these skills and kind of implement your studies. Well, I mean, um, I, I think that it's a, a process, right? Okay. You, you're trying to prove yourself every day in in what you've learned, in the skills that you've uh, acquired there. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say that I've uh, achieved that yet. I mean, maybe but it's- during the, the process. Desire, Absolutely. The energy. Absolutely. Okay, so then, yeah. you know, one last thing which I wanted to ask before we move on to the scholarships and, you know, who are they offered to, but then for somebody who studied in Germany, Hong Kong, comes back to Pakistan because she thinks or he thinks that, you know, there's more need of governance over here within our own country. Do you think that all of those people who are part of the system will give you an opportunity just because of the fact that you studied abroad? Um, That's a very so. important thing to <laughs> you hope so? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, like I said, it's it's a process and you, you're thinking, I mean, you're trying to prove yourself every day. I mm. mean, no, that's it's, great, but what, what, I'm, going to what I'm trying overnight. to ask over here is yeah. that, you know, getting so better education than all of those other Pakistanis who didn't really get a chance to study in this discipline or the university, that means that you are looking towards better opportunities for yeah. work, mm -hmm. right? Do you look at those opportunities over here within Pakistan as well? Because you've got such a good educational background. But basically, you're going to you say you're going to stay yeah. in Pakistan, or you're going to look outside. Or oh no, no, for for now, for sure, I will stay in Pakistan because um, acquiring this experience here, work mm. experience here, I think it's quite valuable. Mm. Um, absolutely. So yeah, um, I so mean. So the opportunity is there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thank you very right. much. He just wanted, yeah, he just wanted <laughs> to make sure you know it's like the brain drain because m most people who get studies, who study abroad, then they don't come back or yeah. people leave the country. A lot of youth leave. But you want to ask the scholarship? Yeah, then? all right. So now let's just move on with the scholarship. So who gets the scholarship? Private and public differently. Yeah, okay. maybe, maybe uh, let me just um, briefly introduce what we're actually doing before going on um, to the scholarships. Um, we've been in uh, Pakistan, the German Academic Exchange Service has been in Pakistan since 2010 mm -hmm. and we do research, marketing, study marketing, uh, we are on Facebook also, Dart Pakistan, we have a website, uh, just Google Dart Pakistan, you'll arrive at our website. Mm -hmm. We do scholarships, we promote um, research collaborations, we promote the social sciences in Pakistan and German language. Okay, okay. coming to the scholarships, your okay. question. Um, we have various scholarships li scholarship lines. Um, one big scholarship line that we operate is together with the HEC, the German uh, Germany program. And uh, last year in one batch alone, we have two per year, we sent out about 70 PhD scholars to wow. Germany, wow. 70. And um, currently, or in uh, 2015, as by the, the current report, 
we have a total number of more than 700 uh, Pakistanis and German that we fund under various programs, okay. which include the HEC Germany scholarships, where we collaborate with the HEC. Then we have um, our own PhD scholarships. The piles are there in my office. I'm busy weeding through them right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have the Public Policy and Good Governance Scholarship that uh, Malia mastered so successfully. Um, we have uh, development-related postgraduate courses and so on and so forth. So very, very many opportunities. And the good news is, even if you don't get a scholarship, since studying in Germany is free, as the ambassador has already pointed out, I think it's a manageable option, and it's a good investment also. And I want to um, want to direct this at the parents out there as well. Um, there is no other investment that yields such a high dividend than investing in education. Exactly. Mm. And if you calculate with, let's say, 700, 750 euro living expenses per month, then you will see that this is actually lower than in many other countries where people study. And I also want to tell people, it's good that you mention it, when it comes to the question, how safe is it to study in Germany? Mm -hmm. This is something that many parents ask me about. Mm -hmm. um, we are aware of certain news reports, and um, we don't deny them, but mm -hmm. let's put them into context. And if you look at the Better Life Index that the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development issues, the OECD, you will see that Germany is still one of the safest countries on earth. Mm. One of the safest countries on earth. And um, these uh, 400 universities, they offer fabulous opportunities in all kinds of subjects mm. from um, uh, public policy and good governments, mm -hmm. economics, engineering, business, um, cosmetology, <laughs> yeah, uh, Finnish ph philology, everything is there. Almost 19,000 courses are there to choose from. You have more variety if you start learning German, <laughs> which yeah. we welcome. Yeah. But there are also more than 900 courses in English. Oh, that is I amazing. think we should start learning German, Shalot. Yeah, <laughs> I think we will have to do that too. But then at the same time, what I'm trying to ask over is, what is the eligibility criteria for getting a scholarship? Yeah. Um, I've been talking about eligibility for studying, mm. and also for scholarships, um, it depends. First of all, we need good grades. Yep. And uh, then as we focus on um, PhD scholarships, it's very important to have a good research proposal. Okay. You need to know what, uh, we're, uh, what you're doing, and the self-initiative that we're discussing, that comes into play big time. Because you need to make up your mind, you need to sit down, you need to come up with a research question that you want to solve in a theory-guided approach, and this you need to tell us. Okay. The application deadline for our scholarships, they will be September next year. The mm -hmm. HEC has different uh, deadlines, right. inquire with the HEC. And, um, also very important is that people organize a supervision letter. Yeah? Everything centers about self-initiative, so you need to present, um, or candidates need to present their research proposal to a supervisor, mm. and then the supervision letter is added. Again, the grades are important, the language is important. These are some of the requirements. Okay. Um, applying for a scholarship is a bit of a procedure. Mm. Doing a PhD in Germany is no cakewalk. It's mm. serious business, obviously. It's not a half-day affair. But on the other hand, it's also no rocket science. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we have had hundreds of uh, scholarship uh, candidates that have mastered the challenge successfully. More than 300 are back in Pakistan already. Wow. Mm. And these people, they have managed it. They have uh, met the challenge. and. Uh, uh, many professors were very happy with them. They were good oh. candidates and they work here in the universities. They bring their experience back to their motherland. Great. You say, we say fatherland, but to their <laughs> motherland. And um, I think it's a, it's a, great, um, it's a great opportunity. Wonderful. Fair enough. And one last thing, very quickly, that is that, for example, if you've done your PhD over there in Germany and if you get a good opportunity to work over there, is it a piece of cake or it is still not? Working there? Yeah, working there. Yeah, 
the regulation is, I mean, people, people have to decide, students and PhD holders, they have to decide what they want to do. Um, there are two options, as you have already said. You can either stay in Germany or you can return to Pakistan and make use uh, of what you've learned. If you stay in Germany, you typically have 18 months um, uh, to look for a job, and if the job is in line with your qualification and guarantees you a sustainable income, there is a, there is a good chance that you will be given um, a work permit. Please talk to the immigration agencies right. about it. No? That, of course, goes without saying. Um, but these possibilities are there. Mm -hmm. And the Germany welcomes applicants, talented applicants yeah. uh, from abroad, also from Pakistan. And the numbers are rising. We have two-digit growth in any given year. Um, um, from last year to this year, we had something like 16% growth. Last year, it was 25% growth almost. So studying in Germany has, um, I think, is, is a trend mm. for people from Pakistan. And Germany welcomes um, talented students for undergraduate studies, for graduate studies, and of course, for PhD. And for PhD, no, we can also give scholarships, that's our focus, and for selected master courses Wonderful. as well. Wonderful. Um, we're actually running out of time, so we'd just like to get uh, some last words from Your Excellency. Um, you know, for all the parents watching out there, um, what would you say to them right now? The ones, especially the ones that are going to go to university. Well, I would uh, suggest to them to give Germany a chance because it will have an amazing effect on their children. Mm -hmm. It is affordable. It is a bit of a process, as has been said, but it is also, even the process, a good learning experience because if somebody manages from uh, the first steps to finally getting admission, getting the visa and getting there, mm. that is already a good achievement and something that puts the student in a good position to succeed in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. It will give the student an exposure of a different country, a different culture, different language, and that will make him more employable wherever he wants to be employed later mm -hmm. in his or her life. It's a very enriching intercultural experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also not so far away. Uh, so I would say give it a chance. Wonderful. Wow, Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for taking the time up to speak to us. Thank and best you. of luck yeah. with your, um, your career. Thank going you forward. so much. Thank well, you. One last thing very quickly, if you want to share the email addresses. Or I've got the email address. All right. I'll share them. That's okay. Thank so, you very much. So any information, and um, I have sent this to our producer as well. You can log on to study hyphen or dash in i n full stop d e so do log on to that and there it is on our, our screens so if any information look at it i'm going to be looking at and that give it a chance too. guys give yeah, it a chance give it a, <laughs> germany is wonderful i've been to munich and people were wonderful and it's fantastic i just love the autobahn yeah great so <laughs> with that do you log on to our facebook fan page which is with the name of world this morning our twitter page world this morning without g our daily motion youtube page world this morning once again and the repeat is at 5 11 p.m have a wonderful day we will see you bright and early tomorrow till the next time one two three good, good morning. morning good morning thank you very much okay.